when you love something, you fight for it. We're the ones who changed everything. Hey everyone, I'm the Canadian Lad and today I've watched the 14 seconds Eternals teaser at 0.25 big speed. This is gonna be a complete breakdown plus my 0.25 big speed series. So I'm gonna explain who everyone is and try to dissect the plot details from the bits and pieces we've seen already. Now without any further ado, let's begin. So Marvel, totally out of the blue, decided to release a video on YouTube titled Marvel Studios Celebrates the Movies. Half of that video is a recap of everything that's already happened in the MCU. But then to everybody's surprise, we got to see some Eternals footage for the first time ever. Till now we only had a concept art, but now there's some actual footage. Now before I jump into the teaser, let me just tell you who the Eternals are and who they're fighting against. The universe has a group of gods called the Celestials, traveling from planet to planet to do experiments. So when the Celestials came to Earth, Mother Nature offered them a group of people in exchange of saving the planet, creating three distinct new species, humans, eternals, and deviants. Now the deviants are humanoid monsters, while the eternals are the protectors of Earth. They were assigned to fight against the deviants, and because they were only given the job to protect this planet from deviants, they didn't care much about Thanos or Ultron, and eventually they forgot about their responsibilities. Well, mostly because of a character called Sprite, but more on that later. So that's like the basic idea, eternals are here to protect planet Earth and their main foe are the Deviants. Now it begins with Selma Hayek's character aka Ajak, who is the spiritual leader of the Eternals. Ajak is seen riding on her horse in a wide open field. Now looking at this very first shot, you can already guess this film is gonna be like no other Marvel films. The color grading, the outfits, everything is just amazingly different. Credit goes to Chloe Zhao who apparently took a very practical approach while shooting this film. The next shot shows two Eternals moving to touch hands, with the falling shot revealing a better view. From the left we can see Barry Keoghan's Druig, Lauren Ridloff's McCurry, Leah McHugh's Sprite, Gemma Chan's Cersei, Angelina Jolie's Athena, and Brian Tyree Henry's Festos. Now several objects in the background appear to be bits of wreckage, possibly from some sort of pod or spacecraft that could have brought Sprite to Earth. Sprite physically appears to be the youngest of the Eternals, but she's just another old Eternal stuck in a 12 year old's body. Through her friendship with Cersei, she hides a world weary sadness because she's been treated like a child by humanity for centuries. But Sprite is much stronger and clever than she appears. Now Cersei, one of the main Eternals, has an affinity for humanity and has been in love with Icarus for centuries. Richard Madden stirs in the film as Icarus, a leader of the Eternals with superhuman strength. He takes pride in keeping other Eternals safe. Moral, kind, and charismatic, Icarus boasts the power of incredible strength, flight, and ability to project beams of intense cosmic energy from his eyes. Angelina Jolie plays Athena, an Eternal that can form weapons out of cosmic energy. She has an extremely close bond to fellow Eternal Gilgamesh, played by Don Lee. Now Gilgamesh is capable of projecting a powerful exoskeleton of cosmic energy. Conversely, this scene could be the moment where the team splits off and goes their separate ways to live as humans. Which brings us to the next shot where we see the Eternals in their human forms. And this is the first time we see Kumail Nanjiani's character Kingo. He's a famous Bollywood actor who must leave his life of wealth and celebrity to help the team repel the new deviant threat. And notice behind him is an actual camera. Now a lot of people thought this might be a mistake from Marvel, they're gonna fix this in the post, but I think none of those are true. This is not a blunder from Marvel, because if you have been following the Eternals plot leaks, Kumail's character is currently filming a documentary, hence there's a camera following him everywhere. In the next shot, we see Thena fighting Gilgamesh with her sword. Now if they're supposed to have a good relationship, then I wonder why they're fighting here. I think this could be a flashback scene introducing us to both the characters. Now if you look closely, you can actually see Thena's sword is surging with some mystical energy, which brings us to Kit Harrington's character. We know Kit Harrington is playing the Black Knight in the MCU, who wields the Ebony Blade. So this sword could be MCU's interpretation of the Ebony Blade. Ebony Blade grants its wielder a wide range of powers in the comics, including the ability to slice and dice through any substance, retroactive immortality, and energy absorption. It will be interesting to see what abilities are brought over into the movie incarnation. Or maybe this is just another sword. Then we see this epic scene in front of this giant gate, and all the Eternals are in their original suits. McCurry shows up her super speed 
Edward the Bad, as she assembles alongside Athena, Gilgamesh, Icarus, and Kamel Nanjiani's Kingo. Now, this gate is the Easter Gate from the ancient city of Babylon, which was opened back in 575 BC. Although this has become a place for the tourists to visit, it seems as though Marvel has reconstructed it in its original shape and form. So, just like Kevin Feige said, the story of this film spans 7,000 years and explores humanity's strengths and flaws. So, we're gonna see the Eternals influencing some big events throughout history. Now, notice when McCurry shows up in her super speed and stands alongside Athena, she ran so fast that her shadow wasn't visible at all. It's only after she slows down we get to see her shadow on the ground. This indicates just how fast she is. This also depicts the attention to detail in every scene from the VFX department, even if it's only for a 14 seconds teaser. And that's it. This would be my breakdown of the Eternals teaser, and I hope I was able to answer some of your questions regarding this film. To be honest, after Doctor Strange 2, this might be the best movie in Phase 4. The reason being its unpopularity. Whenever a character isn't that popular, or the fans don't really know much about the source material, it allows the writers to explore and go beyond anyone's expectation. And the fact that Chloe Zhao has directed it, it's already different from any typical comic book movie. So yeah, I really think this movie might break a lot of records. Not just in terms of business, but it could potentially change the way we look at comic book films. So if you agree, then please give me a thumbs up and grab the subscribe button if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to get updates about my videos. Till then, I'll see you lads in the next one. Hi. Hi. Hello, it's me. Um, it's Tom. Um, look, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, I just, I, I, um, I've noticed that in these long superhero montages, Loki tends to get, you know, a bit left out, even though arguably he's incredibly heroic himself, you know, cunning, charming. Uh, I could go on, but, but, but maybe why don't I just prove it to you? Wednesdays are the new Fridays.